once I saw you, I really started realizing like, this isn't crazy what I'm thinking about. People are already doing this. I right. knew people were full-timing for years, but then I started realizing you don't have to be in an RV. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're meeting Jacqueline, who is in this really big, beautiful uh, school bus. It's a really windy day today, so we've come inside to start out the video. And Jacqueline, it's uh, you and your daughter. Mm -hmm. My adult daughter. So um, that's the reason for the big bus. It's 38 feet long, and we wanted to go full time and travel together, but we didn't want um, her to have to, me have a bedroom and then her have to put the couch up and down every day or things like that. I wanted her to feel like she had her own space. So that's the reason for the big bus. It was empty and we were able to custom build it the way we wanted to. Right. With two bedrooms, two offices, everything. We all, we both have our own space. And that's really important with an adult daughter. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just really important. So she has her own bedroom. That's mine. That's oh, the that's bigger yours. one. You yeah. get the big one. That's okay. the bigger one. <laughs> oh. I drive. I told her when she learns to drive, then she can choose where she lives. <laughs> oh, okay. And she gets, we'll see, in the box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she's Good. up front. Mm -hmm. Good. But she is still hers. Yes. It's that's hers. the main thing that counts. Yes. And she gave me a list and said, you know, if I'd really want these things or these are the kind of things that I loved when I lived at home. So that's what we incorporated into her area. And uh, we just, it was hard at first. We moved her bed around a couple different places to get the right feel. And we finally got in a spot where she really loves it. And then she started saying, okay, I'd like a desk area or I'd like some storage. And so that's what we do along the way. So we kind of did the front first and got her settled and then the big kitchen and then off to my room uh, to finish up soon. So uh, were you living in the bus in this process? We started off, we left, um, my, my son graduated, so we left the house and I moved into a 24-foot party bus. Right. And we did that for a whole year. And that got kind of cramped and small. So I knew I was going to get the big bus eventually. So we moved into the big bus. So actually, we were moving two buses at the same time every day. She doesn't drive, so I had to do it. So I would take one down the road, drop it off, ride my bicycle up the hill, get the big bus, take that down the hill. And everybody in the neighborhood would watch me do all this. And they, they were just wondering what, what was going on. But eventually they saw the big bus getting painted and you know decorated and things like that. And then I parked the little bus once we were able to move everything in here. And so you, you, where were you living? Well, in, in Huntington Beach, California. At, at RV parks or? No, no, we're boondockers. Okay. <laughs> we're urban dwellers. So uh, during the day, I'll park at the, the state beach or one of the local parks. And there's no problem with that. You can always park during the day. As long as you leave on time at night and you're out of there. Um, at that one moment, our local Walmart was letting us stay there. So I thought that was a really good time to get this done. So during the day we'd be at the park and then we'd go down to Walmart at night and then I'd go get the other bus, take that to Walmart. But I'm very good. If you do something like that, you go in late at night, very late when they're closed and you leave super early. And I'm not a morning person. I don't like getting up, but I follow my rules. And if I leave early in the morning, no one bothers me. No one tells me to leave. No one tells me to stop coming around. So even, even in the city, things like that, there's etiquette to the, to the situation. Very much so. Mm -hmm. And as long as People, you know, the, the people get used to you. They see you. Mm -hmm. You're not doing any harm. Mm -hmm. You live a little weird. Yeah, but... they, to them. Yeah, to them. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not doing any harm, so fine. Right, right. Live and let live. Mm -hmm. So now my bus is pink on the outside, but nobody gives me a problem. I can pretty much park anywhere I want. And like I said, I go late, I leave early, and no one says anything. So you're actually still in Huntington Beach? Yes. Uh, oh, you are. That's our home base. And do you still have both buses? Yes, yes. And are you still shuttling them every day? No, I'm not no. shuttling them okay. anymore. The little bus is now back to being my art my art party bus. I do my art shows, and um, that's in storage when I need oh. it. And I'll go home, park this at the beach, drive over to the little bus, get it, go work, put it back in storage, and then go get this bus and go home, wherever home might be that night. <laughs> da you do that daily? No, not no, daily. Just no, just every so often no, when you need yeah. the bus. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm blessed that I can choose when I want to go work and, and what week. So maybe one or two weekends out of the month, I'll go do a, a show that I'm familiar with, a show that, that I know I can uh, do good that weekend. And then I'll put it back and we'll, then we won't do anything for a couple of weeks and we'll come out to the desert and, and other places like that. So that raises the next question then. How are you supporting yourself on the road? Um, through my art business, most of all, um, I do, I learned that if I do big festivals or big events, 
then I only have to do that once in a while and then I can afford to travel and relax for a while and then go back and do some more. Um, I can kind of do it seasonally as I want. And then um, my daughter lives with me because there's a medical condition and so she receives um, social security. So we just, we watch our money and we, I've always been thrifty. I've always uh, been a very good shopper. I watch what I do and I watch what I spend and we're able to do it. Good. So uh, your art bus is kind of a mobile studio. Yes, mobile art and studio. And this bus is your home. home. This home. is my home, yeah. Wow, that's right. really amazing. I love it. Now we talked about your art, but mm -hmm. we didn't describe it because it's awfully hard to describe. Mm -hmm. But here's a really wonderful example. Thank you. Can you give Thank us you. just a quick overview of, of your art? This is called Ebru art. Ebru is a, a Turkish word that means cloud art. I put a seaweed gel into a long tray, uh, a waterproof tray, and then I drip paint into the onto the top of the gel and it floats. And that's where the the word cloud or ebru art comes from. I'll take some kind of a, um, a handmade comb or a stick and I'll swirl it into a design and then I take some kind of usually silk. I, I'm a silk artist. I'll dip a piece of silk into it and immediately as soon as it touches it, it adheres to it and this is what comes out. I'll take this and rinse it in some water and then let it dry and this is what happens. This is a traditional design. You can see the the swirls out there all going this way because we took a comb and we combed it all the way down. And then we dropped a dot of paint there and we hand made the, um, the flowers into this. This is actually one of the first designs that my daughter ever did. She's very good at it too. So we have a business and this is what we do for people. We go out and we let the customer make these themselves. And we can dip anything that wouldn't get ruined, um, ties or shirts or bandanas. So we'll go to things like a reggae festival or we'll go to, um, to a, a kids activities. Or I did a women's expo in Los Angeles uh, last and we let the customer dip them and they make it and they create a one of a kind item that they made um, for their self or that they made for a special gift for someone else. Tell us again your uh, social media. So if people are interested in this, this, how can they get hold of you? This is my business called The Marbled Mermaid. So I have my website and my all my social media is The Marbled Mermaid. Um, the bus is The Bubblegum Bus, but this one is The Marbled Mermaid. I always knew that I would uh, be full time eventually one day. And the reason we ended up in a bus, I I was trying to find a balance of something great for my daughter and I to live in. I saw tiny houses on trailer beds and I have a big background in building things and making things. So I th said that was, that's what we would do. So we rode to um, Colorado to a tiny house uh, festival and I wanted to really see them and I wanted her to see that we could do this. There's room, there's a loft way up on one side and another loft on the other end up high and we could have our own space. And when I got there, I think I saw somewhere around that time, I saw a school bus and uh, we saw the tiny houses and then we saw how commercial it was getting, how pricey it kept going really? up, up, up. And somewhere around that point on the way home too, I saw a school bus and it hit me for $3,000. I could buy a school bus that came for free with the windows and the walls and the floors and the roof. And I didn't have to hope it would stay together. I didn't have to get another truck to pull it because I don't like pulling things. And, um, and so I started doing the math, a trailer bed just flat with nothing on it is about $5,000. Absolutely. So, and then you have to buy the truck. And so I started doing the math and realized I could buy a school bus and all that stuff could be done. And all I would have to do is come inside and decorate it. So I really loved that idea. So I started to look for school buses. I started to go online and starting to research and there wasn't much back then of what I really needed to see. But over the years kept going and I started to seeing design and floor plans and, and everything else. I, I built um, for years and years, I've built other things that with my dad all the time I would do, I used to do projects with him. So I kind of knew how to build and I uh, remodeled like three RVs and, um, and, uh, uh, and my little bus, my, my little party bus, I redid that all into an RV. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knew what to do, what not to do when I came to this. Um, if I never had any experience in that, I probably wouldn't have jumped to this, right. which I see a lot of people. They, they do a lot of work on these buses that they don't need to do. Um, but because I had a little background in it, I was able to pull it all together and do most of it myself and just get some help for big, heavy things that I couldn't cut or, or grind or whatever. Good. Yeah. 
And it turned out beautiful. Thank you. We're, we're still working on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, lay out the timeline for us. You've been on you've been on wheels for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I've traveled since I was a since I was three years old. I lived with my father in East Coast in Pennsylvania, and my mother lived in California. So we would get in the car. My father and I would travel and see my mom, and then come back. And then when I got older, I would get in the mood to travel and tell the kids, "Get in the back, let's go." And we would go across to uh, California, see my family there. And go back so i've done that i i know route 80 and route 40 like the back of my hand so that was always in me right before i moved out in the city that i lived in i did some research i went out at night with the car i looked around to see where people parked who was doing what i could see people that lived in at the beach area for 10 years i could see that they left late and they came early i would kind of watched um the routines and how things worked before I just jumped out there. Mm -hmm. And then I took the party bus and I would go for a couple days and I would do it slowly, little by little. Then big breakthrough, to really believe that I wasn't crazy, that I could really do this, I started watching this guy on, on YouTube. Some weirdo. <laughs> Some guy that just had common sense, just laid it out as it is. And not a big fancy story, it's just how life is. So, it just all kind of wrapped up in the tiny house and then seeing a bus and watching your YouTubes all the time and seeing that you could go to uh, boondocking in BLM land, that really made a big breakthrough. And um, so we, we left uh, 2016, we left the house in the little bus. We, the end of that year, we came to Quartzsite and we uh, went to the LTV, uh, LTVA, the long-term visitor area, mm -hmm. and we stayed there for a couple weeks. and. I really got the peace that I need then. Then it kind of all fit and said, yes, you can do this. You can do this long term. You can afford to do this. And my daughter can have fun. My daughter just wants to be on her phone and go to the mall. But I was able to make it fun for her um, out in the wilderness and out in the desert in different places that we go or we'll go to the river. And, and she jumps, you know, the dogs and her go in the, in the river and have fun. So we're still learning and we're still going to different places, but we're making it fun. Yeah. So, and so now the adventure is making sure we can get the big bus into locations and learning, learning yes. where to go and things like that. The big bus isn't a problem in the desert. No, no. It's a bit more of a problem in the national forest mm -hmm. and you've, but you've done that. You've dealt mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. We stopped at the, um, we stopped at the national forest, um, office and I showed them a couple places and I said, can I get into any of these places? And quickly they told, no, you can't drive in this one. No, you can't fit in that one. And then the third one, yes, you could fit in there easy. So we did that. I also noticed that uh, I got lucky and got a map from AAA. And it had all the um, federal lands on it. Mm -hmm. And it had one column in it that said what size rig you can, you can fit in there. Um, so I look for stuff like that. I look for a map that has the length of the RVs. Or I'll go on the California website um, for the state parks and I'll look somewhere in there. It's, it's kind of hard to find, but somewhere in there, it'll have a graph of the length of the RVs that can fit into those sites. Mm -hmm. So I know the places I can go where I can fit the big RV. So that's my, that's this year. I'm going to do a lot more research. I might even put it on my website, make it easy for people. You can fit in these, you can fit in this one. You can't fit in that Very one. Very good idea. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I want to do. That'd be a really yeah. good idea. Very mm -hmm. helpful for people. Mm -hmm. So you have, so you're on social media. Yes. Yes. So tell much. us on your social media. Um, the bus is called uh, Bubblegum Bus. So I just started my YouTube and I have Bubblegum Bus for my YouTube. Instagram, at, if you can find me under Bubblegum Bus for all of those. And um, uh, the website too, it will be bubblegumbus.com. I haven't got to that yet, but I'm really gonna put our travels and a blog on there, what we do, where we go. We're a little different than everyone else. Mostly, like you said, it's um, a husband and wife. They, right. they have one bedroom, they sleep together, they, they know each other's routine. We are total opposites. You know, some kids are just like you, and then you have those other kids that are like their fathers or somebody else, right? right? Well, my daughter and I, we love each other dearly, but we're total opposites. So we have to try to make things work the way we do it. So I want to put that on the blog, her view of things, and then my view of things. Very and good. when we fix something, like if I'm fixing the sink or doing the plumbing, you know, she's right there assisting me. She, she doesn't like that stuff, but she is right there assisting me and learning along the way. So those are things we want to put on the blog and on the website. And, um, and then of course our videos as we travel different places, like right here, we're in the desert and crazy things happen all the time, even when you're not trying to find them today. Uh, a donkey, a burro, walked by our bus. 
<laughs> we didn't expect to see anything. But yesterday when my daughter first saw it, she was a, a ways away. And I went outside and she's running this way. I'm like, what are you running for? There's nothing out here. And so those little things are very funny when we put them on the YouTube and explain what happened and why we saw a burrow in the middle of the desert. Right. So those are the things you'll see on there. Good. Yeah. And that's what people enjoy seeing. Yeah. They like yeah. to follow your travels and yeah. our mishaps. <laughs> yeah. Mishaps. And yeah. They're just good laughs. Mm -hmm. yes. Good times. Well, Jacqueline, just thank you so much for sharing this with us. I really, really appreciate it. So, folks, I know you've got something out of this. You've been inspired in many, many ways. Uh, if you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you. <music>